Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this lesson, we shall be discussing the detailed analysis of the grave lands of Africa by Agustino Neto. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. The Grief Lands of Africa is a poem written by Agustino Neto. The poet was born in 1922 in the Bengal province of Angola. Agustino Neto was a doctor, politician, and a poet. He was imprisoned because of his political view. During this period of imprisonment, he wrote many of his poems, which were later compiled in 1973 as Sacred Hope. The Grave Lands of Africa was first written in Portuguese and was later translated to English. The Grave Lands of Africa is a recollection of the pain, suffering, and the untold suffering and hardship that the African continent was made to go through as a result of the many years of slavery and colonization. Slavery was a big blow on the African continent as millions of abled young men and women were forced to other parts of the world to satisfy their needs and desires at the expense of their homeland. As if this was not enough exploitation and injustice on Africa. Colonization was later introduced in Africa. During this period, which lasted for more than 100 years, Europeans ruled over the lands of Africa and controlled all her resources. The title of the poem gives readers a hint on what is expected in the poem. Reference to the word lands is an indication that this injustice and exploitation was not done at a particular place or one spot, but this exploitation and injustice was done in the whole of Africa. Let's now take a deeper analysis of the lines contained in the poem. The grave lands of Africa. In the tearful wars of ancient and modern slave. In the degrading sweat of impure dance. Grieved. The poem is set in Africa, a continent that has suffered slavery and colonization. It begins on a sad and pessimistic manner this stanza is a recollection of one of Africa's bitterest history, which has made the African continent and its land to grieve. Here, our poetic persona bemoans the pain, sorrow, and untold hardship Africans went through in the period of slavery. Africans were reduced to cheap commodities in the markets that can be sold and bought. This is what the poet makes reference to as degrading sweat. It is clear that this exploitation and injustice caused the lands of Africa many years of pain, suffering, grief, and untold hardship. The grieved lands of Africa, in the infamous sensation of the stunning perfume of the flower, crushed in the forest by the wickedness of iron and fire, modernization, the grieve land. The second stanza delves into another pathetic chapter of the history of Africa, which brought about untold hardship and pain on the continent. The Industrial Revolution came with lots of negative consequences on the African continent. During this period, 
there was a mad rush by Europeans to partition, control, and possess territories in Africa, which led to the exploitation of the continent's natural resources to feed their industries, leaving the lands of Africa grieved. The grieved lands of Africa, in the dream soon undone, in jiggling of jailer's keys, and in the stifled laughter of victorious voice of lament, and in the unconscious brilliance of hidden sensation of the grieved lands of Africa. Here again, our poetic speaker takes us through another sad chapter or another sad history of the African continent. Many dreams and aspirations of Africans were aborted as a result of slavery and colonization, killing the craftsmanship of the African continent. Therefore, the lands of the African continent will continue to grieve, for they are lacking something essential for their growth and progress. Reference to jiggling of jailer's keys suggests imprisonment for anyone who tries to go against the Europeans. Alive in themselves and with us alive, they bubble up in dream, dead with dancers by Baobab, overbalanced by the antelope, in the perpetual alliance of everything that lives. This stanza is different and contrasts sharply with the first, second and third stanza because it gives hope to the African continent in spite of her grief. Here, our poetic speaker speaks of the unshakable spirit of the African continent. He goes on to tell us that even those who have suffered death and those who have died as a result of slavery and colonization are still alive in themselves and with us alive. They shout out the sound of life, shout it, even the corpses thrown out by the Atlantic and putrid offering of incoherence and death and in the clearness of rivers this stanza is a continuation of the optimism found in the fourth stanza. This gives a message of hope to Africans as the sound of life keeps coming from the grief lands. He moves on to talk about the unshakable spirit of the African continent. He tells us that nothing, not even death, can stop Africa or hold it back since spirits of Africans who died on their way to the Atlantic or the way of no return still live with us and are still alive. Therefore, the African continent is unshakable. They live, the grave lands of Africa, in the harmonious sound of consciences contained in the honest blood of men and the strong desire of men and in the sincerity, in the pure and simple rightness of the star's existence. Here again, the stanza is an optimistic one. The tone and mood of the poem gradually transcends and changes from a sad one to a theme of hope and a ray of hope at the end of the tunnel. This stanza is an optimistic one and gives a hope for the future of Africa. After many years of slavery, after many years of suffering, after many years of torture, after many years of hardship, after many years of colonization, the African continent is yet to see a ray of hope. Therefore, we 
are the imperishable particles of the grave lands of Africa. So long as we are alive, then the hope, the dreams of our forefathers will come to reality. They live the grave lands of Africa because we are living and are imperishable particles of the grave lands of Africa. Even though our ancestors are dead, our poetic speaker considers them alive. They live with us. They live. This last and concluding stanza, which is more or less like a closing remark, vehemently reaffirms the poet's strong conviction in the unshakable spirit of Africa. The African continent will continue to survive. The continent will continue to survive this hardship. The continent will continue to survive this grief. We will continue to survive this torture. Africans are the imperishable particles of the grief lands. Therefore, as long as there are people living in the African continent, then there is a hope for a better tomorrow, for the dreams of our forefathers, the dreams of those who died during colonization, the dreams of those who died through the shackles of slavery will come to a reality since the imperishable particles will continue to march forward. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video.